Hi everyone. In the last video, we learned how to install Linux on our systems. We installed Ubuntu 14.04 Desktop Edition in a virtual environment. So now in this video, we'll start off uh, from where we left in the last part. In this video, we'll learn how to use the terminal and see how to run Python on Ubuntu. So after you've completed the installation process of Ubuntu and restarted your system, you'll reach this login screen. This login screen will have a user account that you created and a guest session. So just put in the password that you created at the time of installing Ubuntu and press enter to login. Now since it is the first time that you are logging into your new virtual machine, it will take a few seconds before the desktop loads. Okay, so this is how the Ubuntu desktop looks like. You can see a bunch of icons in the left hand side column. These are some applications that are pre-installed in Ubuntu. So first we'll see how to reach the terminal. Take your mouse pointer to the left top, the first icon in the bunch of icons in the left column and click on the first icon. This will open a search area where you can search for applications or anything in your virtual machine. Now here type in terminal and you should see the terminal app. Left click on the app to open the terminal. The terminal is a command line interface for Ubuntu and it is very similar to MS-DOS for Windows but it is very different than MS-DOS in terms of the commands and functions that it supports and in many ways is much more powerful than MS-DOS. Okay, so first let's verify if the internet is working on this virtual machine. You type ping space google.com and press enter. Now if you see such replies, you know that the internet is working. Press Ctrl C to stop pinging. If you see some other error messages like request timed out or destination host unreachable, that means that the internet is not working on this virtual machine. Please refer to the previous video to check the settings of this virtual machine and make sure that you have configured the virtual machine in a way that the internet works. Now an important thing to do with the fresh installation of Ubuntu is to update the list of packages that are available for installation on this operating system. This can be done by running the sudo apt-get update command on the terminal. Now this is a system level operation so only a super user or a user with administrative rights can execute this command. This is why we add sudo before executing most apt-get commands. sudo is short for super user do. Now it will ask you for your account password. So apt-get is a command line package management tool for Ubuntu which is used to install, remove and manage software packages. When you type update with apt-get, it instructs this package manager to download a list of all the latest software packages and their latest available versions from the internet. You can see a list of URLs here on the screen from where the apt-get is downloading the latest list of packages. These URLs are online software repositories which maintain the list of latest software packages available for various versions of Ubuntu. Now we don't need to go into more details for the purpose of this course. Once the apt-get update operation is complete, let's get started with Python. Now Python comes pre-installed with most versions of Ubuntu. You can enter the Python channel by simply typing in Python in the terminal and pressing enter. We can see here that Python version 2.7.6 is installed. Okay, so before we start working with Python, let's install a package manager for Python so that we can install and manage new Python packages easily. Now exit the Python shell and type sudo apt-get install python-pip. Now this command instructs the apt-get package manager to download and install the package named python-pip. Now we just updated the list of repositories, so apt-get will install the latest available version of python pip. So as you can see here, apt-get automatically finds out all the dependencies for this new package and gathers a list of all the packages that would need to be installed or upgraded to successfully install python pip. This makes installing and managing packages extremely convenient and this is one of the prime reasons that we are using Ubuntu. You don't have to worry about any version mismatches or any unmet dependencies or any missing modules etc. It also tells you the amount of additional disk space that will be used after the installation is complete. Now press Y and enter to continue. Now just like apt-get is used to install and manage packages for Ubuntu, pip is used to install and manage packages for Python. 
So just like we used apt-get install to install packages for Ubuntu, we can use pip install to install packages for Python. So now let's try to install a package using pip. Now similar to apt-get, we type sudo pip install package name, let's say requests. Now requests is a HTTP library for Python. We will use this package to send get requests to some of the social network APIs in the next tutorial. Okay, so it looks like it is already installed here. So let's just go to the Python shell and try out this library. Type Python in the terminal and press enter. Now to use any library, we will have to import it first. So we write import requests and press enter. This is very similar to the hash and clue statements in C or C++ programming. Now let's start by sending a get request to google.com. This is essentially the same thing that your internet browser does when you open Google or any other website in your browser. It sends a GET request to the website, receives a response and displays it. Now we are doing the same thing in Python. So we write response equal to requests.get google.com and press enter. Now if you type response and press enter, you see this response object with a code 200. Now 200 is the HTTP code for an OK response. It means that we were successfully able to send the request and get a response. Now to see the text part of this response, we type response.text and press enter. This is the HTML source code of google.com. You get the same response when you open Google in your browser, but the browser is capable of understanding this HTML code and showing it as a pretty looking web page that you see. Okay, so let's get out of the Python shell and write a Python code in a script or a file which you can reuse because you can't program in the shell forever because as soon as you exit the shell, you just lose all your code. So now let's open a new Python script file and name and call it hello.py. I'll be using the vi editor to write the script, but you can use any text editor you like. So let's write the customary hello world program. This is just very easy. You just type print hello world in the file and save it. To execute the Python script, just write python space hello.py and press enter. And there you have it. You have the first hello world program in Python. Now this is all for this tutorial. This tutorial was just a getting started kit for Ubuntu and Python. In the next tutorial, we learn how to collect data from Facebook using the Graph API. If you have any questions or comments, please post them on the NPTEL discussion forum. We'll be happy to assist you with any doubts or clarification or help. Thanks.